Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. For this video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually design and also implement this step impedance low pass filter on a microstrip line. There will be A series as well as B series. Once the B series is ready, I will put under the description in order for you to have a full understand how can we actually design a low pass filter by implement this step impedance. This will be the part 22 series discussion on filter design. So guys, if you're keen to know more about filter design, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, let's quickly understand what is actually a step impedance low pass filter and maybe what is also the advantages and also disadvantages when we actually design a low pass filter using this step impedance. Okay, this step impedance low pass filter, in fact, is a relative easy way to design a low pass filter, basically by altering session of very high and also very low characteristic impedance line. Okay, so later on, we will take a close look. Okay, in fact, this is one of the easiest way to design a low pass filter. Okay, such filter, which is a step impedance filter, are usually referred as step impedance or high Z and low Z filter. They are popular because they are very easy to design and they definitely take up less space as compared to the similar low pass filter using stuff. Okay, I have actually discussed this filter design, low pass filter design using stuff. This method using the step impedance, you can see that they are much, much easier to design. I'm pretty sure on this. And they also take up less space, okay, which means that they are more compact. Hence, this is always a preferred method okay, if you have not much clue how to design this low-pass filter. Or maybe for a start, I think this will be the easiest method to design a low-pass filter using step impedance. Okay, step impedance low-pass filter use distribute element, okay, which means that they use, like for example, microstrip line. And once you use microstrip line, okay, they exhibit some frequency dependency, okay, which means that maybe there will be some loss. Okay, everything all depends on frequency. The higher the frequency, it becomes more unpredictable okay, for microstrip line. So therefore, hence, okay, it involves a lot of approximation and also their electrical performance is not as good as desired. Okay, so this is the disadvantage when we actually use a distribute element. So the use of such filter is usually limited to application where a sharp cutoff is not required. Okay, so as you can see from here, typically okay, for this method to use step impedance low pass filter, we can only have a gentle cutoff. So if we require so-called a sharp cutoff, then this will not be the preferred method to design the low pass filter. Okay, so basically you need to balance the many different ways to design this low pass filter. But over here, you can see that this method is simple. Okay, but if you need to have sharp cut off, then this will not be the preferred method. Step impedance low pass microstrip line use a cascade structure of altering high and low impedance transmission line. So we can see from here, okay, for example, let's take a look on this microstrip line. So basically, they cascade the high and low, high and low, high and low, etc. all the way. Okay, so this will be the input impedance. This will be the output impedance. Typically, they have 50 ohm. Okay, the high impedance line act as a series inductor. Okay, so you can see from here, this is the high impedance. Okay, they are basically can be mimicked as a series inductor. And the low impedance line act as a shunt capacitor. You can see that this is shunt. So basically, this is with low impedance. Okay, so basically, this part here can mimic as a shunt capacitor. And then this thing go on and on. Okay, therefore, 
this filter structure is directly realized the LC ladder type of low pass filter. Okay, one thing I want to highlight. Okay, whether you start off with L or if you prefer to start off with C, it doesn't matter. So for this case here, you can see that this is basically the input impedance. It start off with a high Z followed by low, high, low, high, low. So in short, it need to be high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. So it doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't matter okay, if you start with low, high, low, high, low, high. So basically, no concern whether you want to do as high and then low or low, then high. Okay, So basically, they are all correct. Basically, they are so-called, like what you mentioned, is a cascade structure of altering high and low impedance. So it's your choice. The series inductor of a low-pass filter can be replaced with a high impedance light session. Okay, for example, okay, the impedance for high can be 120 ohm. Okay, and the shunt capacitor can be replaced with low impedance light section. Okay, for example, for the impedance for the low can be as low as 20 ohm. Okay, so basically you can see that it's quite a big contrast. High is 120 ohm, low is 20 ohm. Okay, the ratio Z high over Z low. Okay, they should be as large as possible. Okay, which means that you must be clearly distinguish the high and low cannot be like 80, 70, which they are so close to each other. Okay, so how low or how high that you actually want to set? Basically, the actual value of ZH, Z high and Z low are usually set to the highest and lowest characteristic impedance that can be practically fabricated. Okay, I will come to this on the B-series discussion. Okay, so basically how to have the high and also how to have the low. The electrical length of the inductor and capacitor section can be calculated as following. Okay, so you can imagine that these two sets are basically formula. Okay, so let me make it easy for you to understand. Okay, so this is typically the G term. Okay, later on you will realize what I mean by G term. Okay, R not typically will be 50 ohm. Okay, Z high, okay, like what this question mentioned, typically we can Z high as 120 ohm. Okay, so this is how we calculate the electrical length of the inductor. How to calculate the electrical length of the capacitor? Okay, so this C will be the G term. Z low, okay, for example, I mentioned Z low can be as low as 20 ohm. So this will be 20 ohm. So R0 again will be 50. Okay, so instead by work, okay, let me work up an example to show it to you later on. Okay, but before I continue again, okay, please consider to like this video if you feel that this, this work is helpful and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Okay, so again, by words, okay, let me work out an example so that you are able to design this step impedance low pass filter. Okay, design a step impedance low pass filter having a maximum flat response, okay, which means that okay, they basically refer to the so-called the table, okay, which have the maximum flat response and the low pass filter need to have a cutoff frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. It is desired to have more than 20 dB of insertion loss at 4 gigahertz, which means that at 4 gigahertz, it must be at least 20 dB, okay, lower than at the cutoff frequency. So basically, this is what the question one. I must have at least 20 dB of rejection at 4 gigahertz. Okay, so basically, this is what the question one. Okay, the filter in impedance is actually 50 ohm okay, which means that input and output is actually 50 ohm the highest practical lines of impedance is 120 ohm and the lowest impedance is actually 20 ohm okay consider the effect of loss when this filter is implemented with a microstrip structure okay basically the thickness of the microstrip will be 0 0.158 centimeter okay mu r is equal to 4.2 okay tangent Okay, basically the loss tangent will be 0 0.02 and the copper conductor will be 0 0.5 mu thickness. Okay, so this will be discussed at the B series discussion. Basically, at the B series, I will focus on how to find the width and the length and finally implement them on microstrip line. But for this video, I purely focus on how to design a step impedance low pass filter. Okay, so basically this can be the proposed structure. I come to this shortly. Okay, before we can come into this structure here, okay, firstly, because I'm given that it must have at least 20 dB insertion loss at 4 gigahertz. 
I'm not sure whether you can still remember, this is what I have discussed earlier on, on the filter design. So basically, I need this in order to ensure that I will be able to achieve more than 20 dB of insertion loss at 4 gigahertz. Okay, so basically, this will be where you want to have the insertion loss. For this case, I want it to be happen at 4 gigahertz, so it's over here. So this will be the cutoff frequency for this low pass filter. Okay, this low pass filter, I have a cutoff frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. So basically from here, I calculate will be 0 0.6. Okay, so why I need this 0 0.6? Next, okay, I can actually refer to this table. Okay, remember, I need to have an antenation of at least 20 dB. Okay, so basically this is 20 dB. Remember, I have calculated this 0 0.6 earlier on, okay, which is here, this 0 0.6 here. So basically, they are actually looking over here. So I have calculated 0 0.6. Okay, make sure that you understand that this part is not linear. Okay, so therefore, it's not right in the middle. So basically, it's in a logarithm form. So over here, roughly, will be the 0 0.6. So I draw a line. Okay, so it touched the 20 dB. Okay, so over here, you can see that this point of interception is actually in between n is equals to 5 and n equals to 6. Okay, remember, we can only round up rather than round down. Okay, because we want to achieve at least 20 dB of insertion loss at 4 gigahertz. So therefore, we can only round up. Okay, so therefore, I conclude that n is equal to 6 over here. Okay, so once I have concluded n equals to 6, okay, I actually can find my maximum flat low pass filter. Okay, so basically, this will be the table. Okay, remember, these are all the n value from n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. until 10. Remember, I have calculated or maybe I can, I actually refer to the table, n is equal to 6. If you still cannot recall, this will be equal to 6. Remember, it's in between 5 and 6. So therefore, we round up, which means that n is equal to 6. So I have this n equals to 6. This is our so-called all the G term. Okay, so this will be the G1 term, G2 term, G3, G4, G5, G6. This I can omit because this is purely for the resistor, okay, which is 50 ohm. So you can see from here, these are all the G term which I have extract from the table, okay, from the maximum flat low pass filter, okay, because the question tasks me to do this maximum flat response. So therefore, I need to refer back to the maximum flat low pass filter prototype here. So this is how I obtain all the G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, G6 term. Okay, so once I've done this, I'm ready to calculate, can okay, remember this formula here, I'm ready to calculate the electrical length of the inductor and capacitor. I will make use of these two formula. Okay, how can I do about this? Let's quickly take a look here. Okay, so this will be the session 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, let me correlate here. This part will be the input impedance. This part here will be the output impedance. So in short, these are 50 ohm and this will be 50 ohm. Okay, for this case here, I like to implement so-called a low Z first or a shunt capacitor. Okay, so the low Z will be equal to 20, if you still remember. So this part will be this part here, which is 20. Okay, so this part will be high. Remember, it need to be low high. So the high will be 120 ohm. So basically, this will be 120 ohm, followed by a low impedance or a shunt C, okay, which is 20. After that, this will be so-called a high, okay, which is 120 ohms followed by a low Z again, okay, which can be represented by shunt capacitor, which is 20 ohm. And last but not least, this 120 will be represented by this line here. So basically, it will be represented by a series inductor, a high Z. So basically, this is how I get the so-called cascading high-low impedance. So basically, you can see that this is low, high, low, high, low, high. Okay, so these are all the G N term. Okay, so this G N term, which I have found, on the previous page over here. So I just rewrite all this term over here. Okay, so all this number I actually obtained from this maximum flat low pass filter. Okay, basically from G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, G6, all the way here, G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, G6. Okay, so I'm ready to calculate the electrical length. Remember, there are actually two set of formula. Okay, the first one is actually so-called the so-called capacitor, can you still remember? Basically, this will be a low impedance, which is to represent a shunt capacitor. Okay, so basically, this will be the set of formula that actually used for shunt capacitor. So after that will be a series L, which is a high Z. Okay, so this will be the set to represent 
for the inductor or high C. Okay, so if you're not sure, okay, again, let's do a quick visit here. So this will be for the inductor. This will be for the capacitor. So therefore, you can see that these are all the sets of formula. Okay, this is purely for capacitor. This is for the inductor. Okay, how can I get all this value? Okay, the C term is basically copied from the G term. Okay, so basically, this will be the G1 term, which is 0 0.517. Okay, remember, for this low, okay, remember, this will be 20. So therefore, this is 20. And R0 is always fixed, will be on 50 or depend on your input and output. But most of the case will be 50. So you calculate, okay, this electrical length for this capacitor is 0 0.2068. Okay, keep this in mind. These are all value in radians. Okay, so these are all values in radians. Later on, I will convert into degree. But over here, these are all in terms of radian. So this will be the electrical wavelength okay, for this shunt capacitor. Okay, so basically, which is 0 0.2068 radian. Same for the inductor here. Okay, this part will be the electrical length for the inductor. This L again okay, will be from the G term. Okay, 1.414, you can see from here. R0 is on top now, so R0 is always 50. Z high okay, will be 120. And once I punch my calculator, I should be able to get this number, which is 0 0.589. Again, keep this in mind. These are all radian. Okay, from here, you can see that I actually calculate all the term, the electrical length for all the capacitor and inductor. Okay, this one, I don't foresee any issue. So basically, you can populate the table. So what you need to do is you just punch your calculator. You should be able to arrive at all this number. Okay, so with this, okay, I'd like to continue another series of discussion on the B series. So once again, thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you guys soon. So I will do up the B series and I'll put the B series, so-called the link under the description. So give me a, some time. Okay, so after that, you will be able to fully understand how can we actually design a low pass filter by implement this step impedance. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.